All right. Hello and welcome to the Monday, May 24th IPLD bi-weekly sync. We are unprepared due to our lack of typical host Volker who runs all of this infrastructure. However, we will persevere. So in no particular order, I guess I'll talk a little bit because I have uh, so few things to say. Uh, <clears throat> I have the same joyful report of working on documentation website content a lot in the last couple of weeks. Um, there's still a link available in the notes if anyone would like to review it. I'm hoping to launch that very soon. There's just a few more things that I want to get ported to make sure that they don't seem to disappear, namely some of the specs on other ADLs that are not widely implemented, but still the specs are nice, like the flexible byte layout. I need to get that into the new docs. Um, <clears throat> but I think they're very soon ready to go. So if anybody has red flags and would like to not update the DNS entries to the new content, it's getting to be time to like speak now or hold your peace. That could happen in the next week or so. Um, internally to our organization, I've also been spending some time um, trying to spec out what it would look like to work more on making Unix FS v1 legible as an ADL. And um, I'm hoping I'm gonna turn that into some kind of a project proposal in the near future. And that is about it for me. Cool, I can go next. So um, as a bit of a high level update on the reflect work. So I did get all the tests passing about a week ago. Uh, so that's a good um, proof that it actually works, but it's maybe, I think, I think optimistically it's about two thirds of the way there in terms of being fully complete because there's quite a lot of to do's, especially with like edge cases and like weird methods like look up, look path by segment and stuff like that. Um, so there's the main PR, which has gotten quite a few reviews. So I think it's pretty close to being ready to merge. I know it's not like pretty in any way. Uh, there's no docs and I just added one example and that's pretty much it. But I think in terms of like the first chunk of code that we can merge, it's pretty okay. Um, and then the next thing that I'm gonna do is tests. Um, so I do have the schema Django tests running, but they needed a hack. And the better version of that hack is the other PR that I posted, which is um, the deep equal IPLD API. And that also seems to be pretty close. So with those two merged, then the next PR is going to be using both of those to run all the schema gen go tests with code gen, but also with reflect. Um, and once that's in, then I will start chugging away at add more tests, fix to, fix to do's, rinse and repeat for another probably two or three weeks until most of the basic stuff is covered. And then the trailing 20% of to-dos and optimizations and so on, I don't think are going to be urgent, uh, but I will get to those um, with less of a hurry, I guess. And that's as far as the update goes on that stuff. Any questions, any comments? It's great to see that continuing. I'm excited to have a lighter way way to get IPL detail. Oh, and in terms of timing, I was thinking as soon as I have the basics covered and decent examples and okay documentation, I think that's probably good enough to do some sort of, hey, this is a thing. You can try it out if you want with NPL. Um, so say, assuming all the stuff gets merged this week, say end of next week. And I'm sure somebody's going to try it and it's going to panic and it's going to blow up in their faces, but you know, uh, it, it's just going to happen because the code is tricky. Um, and I'm also looking for input in terms of like how the API should look like in the end. I'm not worrying about that too much yet because I haven't, I've only implemented one of the three input code paths so far, but once all three of them are implemented, I'm going to be looking for, hey, is this intuitive? Would you tweak the, the signatures anyway and so on? Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And da, 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 and yes, I will send something that I mentioned to Eric earlier is that I will actually end up sending that PR that for that API to convert an IPLD node into like a basic Go value. So like any IPLD map would turn into a Go map and so on, 
which is sort of like the, re the reverse of QP in a way. Um, shouldn't be used for large things, but quite often people just want the Go value for simple things like, hey, I've got a list of five items or like I've got a string. I just want the string, I don't care. Um, so that would be nice. And the one question for that would be, I guess, just like deep equal, it shouldn't return errors. It should just panic if something goes wrong. Because in general, nothing should go wrong. That seems reasonable that you should only use it when you're confident. Because the only thing that should error is like if I do, if I think that's like string kind, I call a string and then a string errors, like that shouldn't happen in general, right? Yep. Yeah, I think if you're returning like Golang empty interface, then the only errors should be if a node interface is breaking its own contract. So probably panics are sufficient. Right. Because I, I think the same for the same reasoning that we said deep equal panicking is okay, then I think this should also be okay yep. to panic. Okay, cool. I think this would also be the um the inverse of fluent dot reflect method right now, because we've got that thing which goes from arbitrary empty interface and go to IPLD node with lots of caveats, admittedly. But do you think this should live in, in fluent then to be? I don't know. Um, we should think about that at least. <laughs> We're starting to get a good smattering of these helper methods that do these, these useful gluey sorts of tasks. And it's it's unclear to me where they should go. We haven't had a super like clear and consistent line for if they go in the IPLD main package or the Fluent package or one of the other places. Um, we should think about where we want to put that line. I don't really know. I think I lean slightly towards Fluent because it has the opposite function and also because this construct a go value is potentially very expensive, whereas deep equal is you know, it just loops over things. It doesn't like construct big things. Agree. So I, I feel like things that could potentially like make your machine go out of memory should be included, <laughs> not in IPLD. <laughs> that line does work for the current cases. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Uh, yeah, that's it for me. I don't think I have too much, um, I guess. At the end of last week, uh, Eric and I uh, had a discussion about enumeration of multi-codex and reached a tentative agreement on that being acceptable in some yeah, form. I, I owe you a PR, yes. Cool. Um, and once that happens, we will try to finish the IPLD in IPFS. Um, it sounds like there is also work starting in IPFS that I just got pointed to, uh, where they would like to have um, the ability to get individual IPLD items out of the gateway um, on a different interface or API. And they have started coding that against the current format thing. And I am now again motivated to try and land our prime stuff so that that doesn't happen. Um, so I'm going to try and push a little bit harder to have the rest of this ready to go. Um, I think that's the main thing there. Um, I guess the other one that is relevant to this uh, forum is that we may um, take some, well, I guess there's a couple of things actually. So so uh, first one is CAR. Um, so we have a, a new member on the data systems team, uh, Masi, who uh, perhaps with Daniel over the next couple of weeks, will take a bit of time to try and work on uh, go car support for a car v2 uh, variant, um, which would be the current car v1, but with an index after it. Um, and so this is trying to make a as minimal as possible start towards an upgrade path. Namely, it would be sure great if when you saw a car file at the beginning of it was a header that allowed you to do version discrimination uh, and a library that could load both the current car and a subsequent version of car. We're not going to worry about the features that we might want in car, but just that versioning and then the potential support of being able to open a car into a um, read only data store that you can do read only access to. We have these components, but linking them together into a library that can do the versioning side uh, 
is likely a useful building block to extend. So there, we may see some work on that. Um, the other one that is in tangential to IPFS or IPLD space, um, I, I hacked together last week with Hannah's help, um, a library called Legs that syncs an IPLD DAG between a publisher and a subscriber. It does the legwork. Um, uh, and it seems to work. Um, it, it uses all of these various technologies, uh, but, but you can have a DAG and then you can add things and have a new head. And then you say, I have a new head, it's this SID. And then on the other side, at some point it gets an alert that says there's a new head and it gives you the same SID and it's filled out and synced the data store to have those new items. Um, and if a large subset was there before, it doesn't retransfer it. So it, it's nice in that subset. Um, it's not doing that much with IPLD specifically. It's basically at the Go data transfer layer that it's thinking rather than that. Um, but yeah, that exists to continue this tooling thing. So I think that's most of what I've got. Sounds super good. Exciting naming. Um, Tangentially related to cars. If anybody is thinking about test fixtures, I would not mind picking up that discussion again and trying to get it somewhere too. I remember doing a little bit of a survey of like, what are good language agnostic test fixture formats and finding um, roughly that everything sucks as usual in the computer industry. Um, I would, I'd kind of like to pick that up again. I was thinking about doing some test fixture stuff and it would just be nice to have a format that's good for this. I think everything that I looked at the last time I reviewed this, we had some interesting candidates, but some of the most interesting ones also still had some issues where they would confuse the data plane and the control plane sometimes. Like you could have a piece of fixture content which would get confused for a file name header and create a different file. That's kind of not funny. Um, yeah, I was thinking of drafting some like mild patches to some of those formats, which were the closest and seeing if other people would be interested in those as like tolerable substitutes or extensions. Yeah. So if anybody's thinking about that, I'd like to talk more about it later, basically. No solutions today. Cool. There's also, I think, starting to be work on the JavaScript side of car support. So one thing we might get in trying to suddenly push awesome. to car or v2 as soon as possible is that that work that happens is versionable instead of just a car v1 support and then someone has to go in later and support car v2s and end up only half supported that seems like worse than if they just do one development push and get to car v2 directly so possible we'll see whatever you end up with i'd be interested i'd be interested to see uh, what it is so just Keep us in the loop. I might send you a gist of my current draft frustrations with TX tar momentarily. <laughs> I mean, as you were talking, I was thinking to myself, TX tar might actually be a bad format because then you would have to write a parser for every language. Yeah, I feel like we must be missing something. If anybody is watching this like YouTube stream and is thinking, I know a format that actually has consistent support across dozens of languages. Holy crap, please send us a message. <laughs> Well, yeah, but, but yeah, yeah. Um, hypothetical audience on YouTube, there is an exploration report about this also where there's a slightly more complete list of requirements and desires in it. Uh, but yeah, the, most of the formats we've looked at seem to have support in like one or two languages also, as opposed to like approximately all the languages. I don't know why this is. It seems like we have common requirements. Yeah, but, but okay, so you guys have seen that we have JSON fixtures for the selectors tests, right? And they're great, except the first time any human being looks at them, they are shocked by the inscrutability because half of the thing is the fixture and half of it is the thing that you're supposed to be testing against. And like, there's no room for comments here that aren't in band and like, huh. the content is great, but the legibility is really low to a new user. But so you're right, here, it's everywhere. So here's a hot take. You write in something that's better than JSON and you generate JSON out of that to then be consumed by the libraries. 
And in this higher level language, you can have comments, you can have multiple files, you can have structured data that looks nicer, so on. I suppose that's an option too. Because that's essentially what people in the uh, DevOps world do when they want to use, for example, Kubernetes and not have to deal with JSON or YAML. They use a proper, right. better config language and they output JSON. And then the big ass chunk of JSON gets fed to Kubernetes. That could be a tolerable direction. OK, anything else we want to discuss in the meeting time? I don't think so. Um, shall we call a close to the biweekly May 24th IPLD? Yeah.